Welcome to another episode of Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. We are going to dive into a fictional company called Zephyr. Zephyr is going to serve as a reference architecture uh, for the best practices of how to do infrastructure as code and how to use Pulumi to explore common questions that users ask us. Selling our KO Tech and its facsimile has been extremely profitable for Zephyr. Um, they're in fact on their second generation of their online store. Their first generation was a monolith that was deployed manually. Um, but as Zephyr prepares for its next phase of growth, Zephyr evaluated a number of different architectures intended to help them scale their online presence. In the end, they settled on a containerized architecture deployed to Kubernetes because some of the existing team was already familiar with those technologies. As part of this switch to containerized microservices, they're also using Pulumi. Uh, Zephyr's team knew that adopting infrastructure's code would help them with repeatable deployments and being able to use a programming language they already knew was appealing to them as well. For this video, I'm gonna show you the Zephyr online store and how to deploy it. Here is the code for the Zephyr online store. It's all stored in a Git repo. There are a few different options for code placement and in the blog post upon which this video is based, we discuss some of these options. Um, we also discuss what are the advantages and disadvantages of each option. In the case of Zephyr, they've decided to go with what we call a mono repo, meaning they're storing their application code and the associated Pulumi code in the same repository. Let's take a quick look at the Pulumi program. So while this program may look long and complex, even standard Kubernetes YAML is nearly a thousand lines long. Switching to Plumi didn't actually add a great deal of complexity and gave them a lot of benefits over standard YAML. So let's deploy to Zephyr online store and see what it looks like. Okay, we're gonna clone the repo. Okay. okay, let's go into the distribution and the Pulumi folder specifically. Okay, so there is a Pulumi folder in here um, and we're gonna do Pulumi stack init. And we're gonna call it dev. Run npm install real quick to get everything up. Here, let's run npm fund. Okay, great. Then um, let's play me config set, set the AWS region to US West 2. And with that, we should be able to issue a pulling up. Let's take a look here. Okay, um, here's take a look at the preview here. So EKS cluster. A bunch of the internals of EKS, IAM roles, these uh, security group roles, a VPC with a bunch of different route tables. Um, 
you know, uh, then uh, using the Kubernetes provider, namespace, service counts, config maps, deployments, um, and all that. So 107 resources to create. We're going to hit yes to perform this update and let it run. And we'll be right back. Okay, Pulumi up has finished. Uh, so I exported the kube config and the VPC ID. Um, okay, we're going to retrieve the um, DNS of the load balancer now. Let's see. Uh, so we're going to just dump out this output to a file called kubeconfig. And then, let's see. Let's see if that works. Excellent. So here is the load balancer. And then... see if this works all right the zephyr archaeotech emporium um and you know it's selling a lot of great things um fine arcane artifacts uh so here is the website um and you know there's shopping car and catalog and home and all that so there you have it the Zephyr Archaeotech Emporium online store. Even though I've only deployed a single stack here in this video, Zephyr will be using multiple stacks. Each stack corresponds to a different environment, like development or production. This easily enables Zephyr's team to spin up multiple independent environments from the same Pulumi program. This is something we discuss in more detail in the associated blog post. That is it for today's Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. See y'all next time.